Hello makers and welcome back to Mixed Media Masters and welcome to Spectiva Studios where I'm doing my work today. It's good to have you here. Now for today's project I want to work on creating something that's going to be a combination of watercolor and acrylic paints and it's going to allow us to create a really fun effect that is easy to do and really part of our one hour masterpiece for this week. Now what I want to be able to do is uh, we're going to create this. Yeah, that thing right there. Now, I haven't seen it yet. I'll see it when I'm editing things together here. Uh, but now you have an understanding of what we're going to be working on. And in a lot of ways, we're going to be able to work with our piece of paper. And I'm working with a piece of heavy-duty Strathmore watercolor paper. It's 24 by 18 inches in size. It's my, pretty much my standard go-to. And because we will be working on a paint project this week, it makes sense to have something we can paint on. And the overall objective here is to create some blocks of color with our watercolors. And I want to be able to create almost a kind of a solid grid. Uh, I think we're going to do 12 different things within here. So we'll have something that we'll put four across and three up and down. And what I want to do is create these blocks of color, almost like carpet you would find if you were going to some sort of bazaar, right? Something that would show you these different oriental carpets. We're going to create the carpeted areas. And then we're going to come back in and we're going to use some paint pens, which I, which I have right here. And we have some acrylic paint pens that are going to allow us to come in and, and do some decorating once the watercolor has dried. So the first thing for us to do is get a foundation down. And I'm going to be using my, my traveling uh, watercolor set. And I'll put this uh, a link in the description below so you can check it out for yourself. These are very affordable. And the thing I love about these, apart from I do take them when I'm traveling, is that there's a, a full a con a range of colors here. And an opportunity for you to dip in and whatever you need to do. They, uh, they come with this standard. It's a paint paintbrush, basically a water paintbrush. So it has water in the reservoir here and allows you to work with it. Now I'm going to be working with just a standard paintbrush today and a, a, a ramekin with water. It's just going to make things a little bit faster for what we're doing. But what I want to be able to do, first of all, is kind of look at my paper and get a sense of, okay, how far in am I going? I want to get this to be fairly equidistant. So I figure in how, many, how much distance from the sides do I need as my margins and kind of put these blocks in. So I'm going to start by getting my paintbrush nice and wet and I'm just going to use just water kind of as my first pass and come in here and try to get a sense of where it might be that I want to make the paint go. And again, this is not going to be very easy to see, certainly not for anybody on camera, but it's going to give me in the studio just a little bit kind of, a, of an idea of how big I want things to be. And I think that's going to work out really well. Now it's probably about three, four inches from that side. And again, if I want to have uh, four across, I have to kind of plan ahead a little bit. Maybe it only becomes three across. Maybe that's, that's going to work out fine as well. There's, there's no right way to do this, obviously. So if I put one there and I put one here, and again, I'm just really kind of measuring with water and try to keep something that's roughly the same size and shape. We'll go right there. And then, again, I'm having a hard time seeing how much room I have and do... The same thing there. So that's going to be about equidistant, so about three inches either side. Yeah, I think that's going to be nice for what we need to do. And again, once we get some colors in here, it's going to make a little bit more sense. Now, I want the colors to serve more as a background. This is going to be, think about this, this object as something we're going to decorate on top of. So I don't want to make it, you know, all the brightest colors. Now, I am going to go for an orange color initially, but what I want to be able to do is just really kind of get a foundation of color that I can work on top of here. So I'm just going to I'm basically coming in here, I'm going to create a, a square, a rectangle, actually more accurately. And uh, I'm going to use this orange color as a primary to start with. Now, there's nothing to prevent you from using more than one color uh, when you create your square. So if I want to come in here and put a little dash of red in here to kind of just, you know, make it a little bit more interesting, I can do that as well. Again, some colors, when you get them in there, like red's one of those colors that kind of dominates whatever we put in there. So I'm going to try to thin it out best I can. Maybe get a little bit down in here, but uh, there we are. So again, I want to create a block of color that I'm going to come in and play around with a little bit later. And uh, that should really pull this down a little bit so you can see more accurately what I'm working on here. All right, so that's going to be working at the top. And again, I want to kind of put something next to it. So maybe about an inch or two inches between the two. I'm going to kind of just use the paint I have on the paintbrush to, to, to block the second one out. We'll do that initially here. So it's roughly the same shape and size. And let me go in and find a, a color. I'm going to go to green here of some sort. And we'll use that to reinforce what's in here. Again, I don't mind getting some blendy colors as long as everything doesn't turn into just solid brown. 
but some of this green will be nice to, to kind of work this in here. And we're just going to create that block. That looks pretty nice as well. Uh, let me see what other color, colors I have. I have a couple things in here. I think this is a uh, purple of sorts. Let's see what that looks like if we come over here. And again, I want to try to put about an inch or so, maybe two inches between that, and we'll bring it over to right about there. And that will work out beautiful for what I need to do. So kind of two things at task here. One is to uh, obviously get the colors down, but also to make sure that we do so in a way that we've got some uniformity and it aligns with the paper and uh, the elements on the on the paper align to one another. Okay. Now again, this is not where I want to be, you know, overwhelming. I just want to basically create a foundational background color. And uh, I'm going to bring this down just a little tiny bit just to make sure that it's somewhat equidistant. All right. That's good. And by the way, I've, I don't know if you can see this on camera, but the uh, the orange and red one because there's so much water, it's uh, gravity has pulled the water to the different corners, which is going to create a really interesting border. So sometimes, you know, let this stuff do what it does, and you'll be really surprised. All right, let me come in here. I'm going to put some uh, yellow and, and yellow-orange down, I think, here. And again, the next layer is going to go right about two inches or so down below. I should learn to think in millimeters and centimeters at some point, too, just to get an accurate accounting here. Let's come kind of bring that in like that. There we go. That's going to look pretty nice. And I think this could just use a bunch more water to kind of thin that yellow out a little bit. And again, that yellow block is, uh, yellow is just one of those colors that does kind of saturate. I'm going to come in here and try to do something just a little kind of, a little touch of green to kind of just make it a little bit more interesting. A little bit more green like that. There we go. There we go. Our foundation. All right. Let's see what else we can do. Um, I'm going to do a, a blue color here, kind of a, a turquoise color, which I think would be nice right about there. And a similar, similar situation. Let's, let's come and get that square. Now, this will be the center square, so we, we want to make sure that, again, whenever we're dealing with anything that's the center of our piece of artwork, that, it's, uh, that it, it balances nicely. We want it to be kind of, it's kind of the the hinge that, or the linchpin, I guess, in this case, that holds everything else together. So let's get that in there. And the nice thing about working with watercolors is you do get these really fun and interesting textures that kind of come into play here. They don't have to all be identical sized. I mean, we're, we're kind of playing with approximates here anyway. And uh, let me see, I think I'm going to put something a little bit uh, more of a Kind of a sienna sort of color, sort of an orangey, yellowy, earthy tone over here. There we go. That's not so bad. Get a little bit more of that. And maybe I'll pick up a little, I don't know, of another color, a little bit of blue in there. And let's get some more water into here. Okay. And that'll Again, as an interesting foundation. All right, so let's see. Um, again, I'm trying to get some interesting, not to repeat colors too much. I'm going to put, um, let's see what I want to put in here. I want to put in a, uh, I want a darker green. I do have some dark greens here. I'll grab some darker green here, and I'll put that in this area right down here. And again, we want it to be similar distance from what the top ones are. And there we go. Get some more of that. Get a different color green in here. A little bit brighter. There we go. And uh, again, let's get some water in there to just blend it all together. And push this up so you guys can, again, once again, see more of what I'm working on. And that's kind of fun. That's kind of fun. Again, we're getting some really interesting patterns in here. And these are going to be the backgrounds, so we will uh, be obscuring these to some certain degree. Next, let's come in uh, to the red family a little bit here. And I'm going to grab some, uh, actually a pretty bright red. I don't want it to be dominant. But so I, mean, I mean, really water this down quite a bit. Because if I just put that in as a block of red, it's going to be really hard to work on top of. So, you know foundational square there, rectangle, and let's just fill it in 
with paint water. There we go. That looks pretty nice too. All right, last color in our, our grid of nine here, and I'm going to, uh, so we've got kind of a blue, orange, and red, yellow. You know, I'm going to go with a more of an earth tony type of thing. I've got a brown in here. That may, that may work out for what we're doing. Let's see if it's not too close to the one above it. No, it's not so bad. Okay. Grab that color, and again, I might I might actually do a blend of of different colors in here just to kind of see what we get. Yeah. Try to get rid of that little extended line that I created there inadvertently, and bring it down like that. All right. So there we are. That, that is our foundation of what we want. We have nine squares of color, rectangles of color here. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to let this dry, and then I'm going to come back and we're going to augment it. We're going to decorate these different squares up with different patterns and different colors. We'll put some swirls and dots or whatever the heck we want in here. And we'll figure it out when we get back. And I'll talk to you in just a moment. All right, welcome back. Now, my paint has had an opportunity to dry. Everything is in good shape. And uh, now I'm going to start doc doctoring things up a little bit with these uh, acrylic paint pens. Now I have a special pen here, actually it has two nibs, it has a, a fine point on one end and a, a less fine point, a more blunt tip on the other end. So this might come in handy for what I'm doing. And again, the overall objective here is to, uh, let's just assume that these are carpets of some sort that we've, uh, we've laid down the foundations. And now we're going to augment them and decorate them up in a, in a special way. Now choosing whatever paint you want to go on here, uh, what we're looking for of course is something that will easily sit on top of something else. Let me come over to my green with my, my orangey yellow color and I'll start by just running a line down the middle like this. That's good. And again, I have the tendency to go for more of a, uh, an uh, abstract art bent as opposed to perhaps something purely symmetrical if we were dealing with a, an oriental carpet of some sort. So I'm going to put like a circle on this side like that, a circle on this side, do this kind of thing. I like this kind of a design element. That looks pretty good. And again, what I, you know, I can go up to the corners and kind of block them off a little bit here like this. And the overall goal here is just to create something that is pleasing. That's it. I mean, there's no right answer to any of this, as you're already aware. And uh, if I want to mix some colors in here, I can certainly do that. Maybe I'll take this uh, brighter orange color. By the way, uh, these paint, you, know, you can test these on a test piece of paper just to see if you're going to get the color you want. And maybe, uh, you know, maybe just kind of a line down the, the side there and a line down the side there. Just enough to draw the eye toward it. Or again, a different color and it gives us a bit of a design element. And that's what I'm doing here. I'm going to come in here and just uh, do a little bit of change over. Let's do a, another one here. I'm going to use my brown color. I'm going to come down here and work on this guy over here. And I'm thinking I might just come in here and let's put some squares in here. Actually, I'm going to kind of do circles and squares like this. So circle, square, and then circle. And then uh, let me do circle, square, circle, square. And I want to do this uh, in a similar way. I'm going to have then a dividing line, a dividing line, and then a shorter dividing line in the middle like that. And then on the other side here, let me just do the repeated pattern. So square, circle, square, circle, circle, square, and then circle, and square. Right? So it's that simple. So my encouragement to you is just do whatever's going to make you happy. We're creating blocks of color. We're going to decorate it with something that's just really going to be interesting to us. And once we're done with this, of course, then we're going to have something that's really going to allow us to see all the different elements. So I'm going to work on this for a few minutes. I encourage you, if you're working on something similar, to work on yours as well. And I'll show you what I come up with as a result.
right, welcome back. Now, again, what we end up doing here is entirely up to us. I just let my imagination run wild here, put some basic shapes in, a blend of colors, and really just had fun with it. And I encourage you to do the same thing, and don't spend a lot of time worrying about doing it wrong. There's no such thing as wrong. Design your carpets or whatever we're creating here uh, based upon your standards, whatever you think is going to work. And uh, yeah, there will be things that you will do. You say, hmm, next time I do that, I bet I can do it a little bit better if I do it this way. You're going to learn by doing like anything else we do. But again, this is a fun project. It's an easy project. And it's the kind of project that will add a really nice, bright splash of color on any of your walls. Makes a lovely gift. I'm going to take this one. I'm actually going to put it up in uh, in my gallery. So if you go to spectivastudios.com and check this out, you'll see it up there. And I'll put, I'll put it up there for, for some very special pricing for anybody who wants to take this home. But uh, yeah, that's what we've done here today. And again, love being able to do these videos and work with, uh, with my team here. You guys are fantastic and the feedback I get from you is great and thank you so much for that. By the way, if you like this video, please hit that thumbs up button for us. It really helps us at YouTube, helps them to show this video to more people. We'd like to do that. We drop a video every single Friday morning. We'd love to have you as part of our community of artists who love to work with, uh, with, with, with different types of media. That's what we're doing here. So we're going to be creating more and more of these. We want you to see them and uh, really excited to keep going. So please hit that subscribe button if you want to be notified when any of the new videos are ready. Anyway, that's all I have for you guys today. Thank you so much for being here. I'll talk to you next time.